Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you at this time, for you are the only one to be greatly adored and to be highly exalted. You are the only one to be worshipped and glorified, for you are our creator, our provider, and our sustainer. With every new day, we see and experience your love and your mercy in our lives. That is why we can praise and bless you for who you are, the God of truth, the God of love, and the God of our salvation. At this time, as we join together in this time of worship, we know that despite 
distance which separates our lands, as well as different time zones that you are with us. So dear God, we ask that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you would speak to us and minister to us by your word, so that we may be closer drawn to you. May we, by your saving grace, experience the transforming power of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we meditate on your word. So we place ourselves and this time of devotions into your hands. Pour upon us your sacred anointing and bless us as we worship you. These things we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The Gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Oh 
Come, divine interpreter, fill this place, fill our hearts, show us what you would have us to know. Fill us with that living bread, your living word, so that we will be strengthened and encouraged as we continue on our pilgrim's journey. So now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. Amen. It is written, it is written, words not only said by Jesus, but also by the devil. It is written. My sisters and brothers, as we journey with Jesus through this Lenten season, we come to a place of a wilderness where the scene before us is a very depressed same one. You see, a wilderness conjures up a picture of a place that the conditions are very harsh. Conditions are very hard hot and hazardous as well. The soil does not support the growth of edible crops and most of the vegetation are thorny, stunted growth which are gnarled and twisted. And if you are lucky after a long search, you may find a pool or water hole which is in great demand by the wild animals which frequent such a place. It is a place also inhabited by wild animals who have adapted to those harsh conditions and who can enjoy the extreme hardship and the extreme conditions in the wilderness. It is also a place where you will find snakes and scorpions and other things that would make a lot of the ladies squirm. Saint to be party leggers, <laughs> some men as well. <laughs> it is not a place that you would want to call home because, in Jesus' time, it is a place where a lot of demons that were cast out were also inhabiting in the wilderness. And it, it is in such a place that we find Jesus. Now, we not only find Jesus there, but we find the devil. But bear in mind that Jesus was led to the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. That's important for us to remember that the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit was there with Jesus. And we know the psalmist said, where can we go from the presence of God? We cannot go anywhere. Wherever we go, God is with us. The question is, why did Jesus go to such a place and for so long a period of time, 40 days and 40 nights? My friends, it is all because of us, you and I. For our sakes and in obedience to God, the Father of us all, Jesus went there. He had an appointment. It was one that he could not put off, and he had to meet the greatest con artist of all time. Now, I want you to bear in mind that Jesus was equal for the task. You see, the devil knew that that time would come when he would have had to face an encounter with Jesus. And don't fool yourself, he had planned long in advance. But Jesus also knew what his mission was. And that's why he was equal to the task. So, what does this say to us? It says that when we are under attack by the enemy, it's not just um, a spur of the moment thing. He has it planned long in advance. You better believe that. He waits for an opportune time. When we are in distress, 
or when something is happening in a moment of weakness and then he puts his plan into operation. Now, most of the time, he also starts in a very small way to see how he can get us, you know. You work in an office, temptation comes, there are lots of stuff around. You take up a little paper clip here, a little pen, pencil there, and it continues. Then you go to toilet paper and other things. You get a promotion. Next thing your hand is in the um, the, the till, petty cash. Next thing you get a further promotion and it's in the company's funds and then you're caught. So from one little thing, it goes on until it gets bigger and bigger. So the devil starts with little things to see how he can get you. Sometimes he also starts with his eggs. You just put something down there. There's no one else in the house. Where can it be? And you're frustrated and the imps are laughing. I'm saying this to let you know that he started the temptation with what he thought would be a simple thing to talk to Jesus. Turn these stones into bread. Would that should be anything difficult for Jesus to do? But the temptations went on to a higher level, up on a mountain, on the pinnacle of the temple, so he started in a small way, and so he does it with us. Start in small ways. Remember too that in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 43 to 45, Jesus relates a scenario of an evil spirit returning to a clean house and then summoning even more of his cohorts. You see, that tells us that Sometimes, when the devil is not satisfied with our responses to him, he brings legions, forces. So we have to be very careful. I want us to also look at what the devil told Jesus. If you are the son of God. The devil knew that Jesus was the son of God. He knew it. But he just wanted to taunt Jesus. And that reminded me of school days when there was the bully, the big bad fellow. And on one particular day, you have your relatives, you have um, some of your relatives and friends standing by, and you take off your cap and you put it down and say, if you was a bad man, touch that. Because you know you have forces there to back you up. And if the bully has sense, he will realize, look, this is, yes, I am a bad man, but this is the thing. So he knew that Jesus was the son of God. But he's only saying, if, if, prove yourself. Taunts. So again, taunts are some of the temptations which face us on a daily basis. Now, he also started to tell Jesus, it is written, you know, but he was a con artist, as I said from the beginning. So let me show you now how Jesus taught us how to con the devil as well. At the first con, Jesus confronted the devil. That tells us that if we are having a situation, a weakness, something we know that we must deal with. We have to confront it. We cannot go about it, soft soap it, bury our heads in the sand because although we're speaking of wilderness experiences, many of us find sand to bury our heads under and ignore the problem. We have to confront it. Otherwise, it gets from bad to worse. And as we can see, it will lead from one level to another. David failed to confront a problem. And someone had to confront the prophet. Nathan had to confront him with the situation. And it led from one thing to the next. It led from betrayal, adultery, to murder. So we have to confront 
or demons, but remember what I said from the beginning. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. So we too cannot confront our situations on our own. On our own, we will fail. We need to have that power, that supernatural power which only God can provide. You tell me it is all right for me to get up here and say, confront it. Okay, um, if you have a problem with an addiction, whether it be um, the dry voices or the wet voices, what are you going to do? Stop for just for 40 days of Lent and then go back in a big way? No, confront it. Get help. Get spiritual help. Get mental help. We need to confront the devil. That's the first con which Jesus taught us. He confronted the devil. The next con, Jesus was connected. And he was connected to the Father. He continued to pray and fast. And so the devil had a problem. Jesus was connected through the Holy Spirit. Remember, I said from the beginning, he was led by the Holy Spirit. And when he arrived in the wilderness, he continued to connect to the Father through prayer and fasting. So you see, if we are connected, we can have that inner strength and that fortitude which we need to confront the situation. Remember, in the Gospel of Mark chapter 9 at verse 29, the disciples could not cast out a demon. And we find Jesus reminded them that such difficult situations can only be dealt with through prayer and fasting. Always remember that. In the third instance, Jesus contended with the devil. Remember, if at first I said he confronted, and we need to confront our problems and our demons. Next, I said he was connected. And then we find that he contended. I know it's a word that we don't use these days. It's not in current coinage. But to contend is not to give up. To contend is to fight until you can secure a victory. I remember a song that my mother used to sing, Be an Overcomer. Only cowards yield when the four they meet on the battlefield. We are blood-bought princes of the royal horse and must fall to naught, nor desert our post. And of course, the refrain, never yield a step in the hottest fight. God will send you help from the realms of light and Jehovah's might put the foe to flight. And the victor's crown you shall wear at last. You see, that little course reminds you of who you are. You are overcomer. You are bought by the royal horse, by the blood you have been bought. And you are conquered. And it is not in your own strength or your might. So when you have to contend, when you have to struggle, always remember that you're not alone and that you have help. If you don't have help, ask for help. The reason I said so, I remember a story of a little fellow who was assisting his father who was a farmer and he was trying to get a large tree stump out of the ground. And the little guy was chopping away, he was pushing, he was drilling, he was doing everything and he was sweating and his father keep looking at him and at last in frustration he threw down his tools and his father asked him hey what's what's happening he said i i can't get it move and the father said have you what have you tried he said i've tried everything and the father tell him no you have not tried everything you have not yet asked for help let this be a lesson to us. We think that we have tried everything, but sometimes we have not asked for help. 
Now, we see that the devil increased the pressure with each temptation. Remember, I said earlier that sometimes he starts small and then he continues to apply more pressure. It was no big time, crucial time. So he applied more pressure. He took him up on the pinnacle of the temple. Sisters and brothers, I want us to realize something from this lesson. The devil can sometimes find himself in places of worship. Look where he took Jesus. Way up on the pinnacle of the temple. And not only he took him up there, but all the time, Jesus was saying to him, It is written. But this time, on the precincts of the temple, the devil now tells Jesus, It is written. Throw yourself down because it is written. He will send his angels to hold you up lest you dash your foot again. So the devil in on the temple, in the grounds of the temple, on the precincts, and quoting scripture too. We have to be careful. You see where he is gone? Right at the temple. But on that occasion, rather than say, it is written, Jesus said, it is said. Twice before Jesus said, it is written. On that occasion, Jesus said, it is said. You shall not tend. So, Jesus, as I said, contended right into the last. And that is why we have to be careful, as I said, because the devil disguises himself in many ways. My suffering again is a con artist. In the fourth instance, Jesus was able to conquer. By doing so, he has taught us that we too can conquer. That old con artist is still around us today. And the weapons used by Jesus to combat the devil are still available to us today. The God we serve is still the same. Now, in the preceding expositions, I have already given you the weapons used by Jesus and the sources from which he drew his strength. He drew his strength from the word. He drew his strength from praying and from fasting. It is written. Finally, Jesus was able to confound the devil with all of his responses. That's why he said Jesus taught us how to con the devil. He was able to confound him. The devil could not understand why Jesus would want to refuse offers of the whole world, want to refuse offers of him, want to refuse offers of power, because that's what the devil, these are weaknesses that we fall for, you know. Um, offers a title, offers a position, offers some money, and we go for it, go off hands. Who would not want fame? Who would not want fortune? Who would not want power? But Jesus was able to confirm the devil by refusing to take the bait. You see, Jesus knew that the Father was dependent on him. We were dependent on him. The whole world was dependent on him. So why would he take the bait just for the moment? Also, Jesus knew that he had to be true to himself. He could not be otherwise. How could he turn stones into bread just to please the devil and respond to his thought? When later in his ministry, he would tell people, I am the bread of life. So how could he turn stones into bread? How could he join forces with the force of darkness when later in his ministry he could say, I am the light of the world? How could he join with the one who brought sin and suffering into the world when later Jesus could declare, I am the resurrection and I am the life? How could he set the captives free? as he declared at the beginning of his ministry, if he was hand and glove with the enemy. If I remember at one point in Jesus' ministry, the authorities couldn't understand. They too were confounded, and they said he has to be doing these things through the power of Beelzebub. 
And Jesus had to respond to them, a host divided against itself cannot stand. My friends, these are serious considerations for us as we go through this Lenten period. We too have to learn to con the devil. Confront him, connect with God, contend with him, and we can be conquerors. Let us also learn to use some of the strategy and some of the words that Jesus used in situations um, with which we are confronted. It is written. It is written. You cannot serve two masters at one time. It is written. If you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourselves and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. It is written. No one who puts his hands to the plow and turn back is worthy of the kingdom of God. It is written. Who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge him before the Father. It is also written, most importantly, there is salvation and no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we can be saved. And you may have some of your favorite verses. I'm sure if I ask each of you to say what helps give you strength, the one particular verse when you say it is written, you will be able to say at least a verse which helps you. So don't rely on your own strength. Content and you shall be conquerors. My sisters and brothers, amidst the gloom of the story of the wilderness and eventually death on the cross, there is joyful news for all of us. If we avail ourselves to Jesus Christ, we can be saved. In the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 35, we find a wilderness situation being described. But in verse 4 of that chapter, we find the words, He will come and save you. We'll get a chance to read Isaiah 35. It describes a harsh place, a wilderness situation. But at verse 4, you find the words, He will come and save you. Sisters and brothers, all of us go through either a wilderness situation or a storm. And if we have not gone through one yet, we're currently going through one, or one is coming. We can't get away from these situations. And we have to learn to deal with them. Whatever it is, remember, He will come and save you. So let us, during this Lenten season and beyond, commit ourselves afresh to Christ so that we will not only say it is written, but it will be said of us, not only it is written, it is engraved on our hearts. That we are not only hearers of the words, but we are doers of the word. And this is the important thing for us not only to be hearers, but to be doers. That way, we can also con the old con artists. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us spend a moment or two as we reflect on the word, and as we reflect on the word, let us think of our own situations our own communities, our own families, our own church, as we pray to God to give us the strength which we need so that we will be able to confront, we be able to stay connected with him, we be able to be conquerors, we be able to be to contain and be conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. And as we reflect on the message, let us sing the hymn of response number 84 king of my life i crown thee now thy shall the glory be lest i forget thy thorn crown bow lead me to calvary
you let us pray dear god heavenly father of us all we know that you care for us and that you love us with an everlasting love because you are love and we are assured that perfect love casts out fear we know that it is because of your love for us that you have sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. We pray that as you were with him through the power of your Holy Spirit in the wilderness, that you will be with us during times of trials, temptations, and testings to protect us from the evil one. We pray that as your people prepare to go to sleep, that you will banish all fears, despair, and gloom. Grant us all safety and peaceful rest. This I pray through Jesus Christ, our mediator and heavenly intercessor. Amen. Of God.
Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.